So um, let me start with um, an interactive activity with our um, audience in Facebook and in Zoom. So actually, we will um, present the uh, Mentimeter app. So um, it can be easily accessed and um, uh, it will be um, flashed on, on the screen. So we have actually prepared um, a simple question in which we, we want to hear about the insights of our audience. So our poll question would be, what do you use uh, data for? So please limit each answer to uh, one word only or just a phrase. So, um, and you can um, answer using the uh, provided link in the screen. Can we also flash the actual results so we can see? Okay, so a lot of people are coming in. So 50 people are now um, providing their answers. So a lot of what we can see here are research. For research, they use data for research, for decision making, for analysis, for policy. Okay, it's still moving. Uh, more people are uh, sending their answers. For insights, for statistics. Okay, so for planning, yeah, information, insights. So more and more people are sending their answers. Okay, so um, I think we already have um, several answers on the Mentimeter app. So thank you. Thank you so much for, um, for that quick activity. And um, it really goes to show that um, our participants are really attentive in the presentation. So. Uh, Please allow me to um, start now the um, actual presentation um, this afternoon. So let me first greet you with um, good afternoon. So good afternoon, uh, Sir Babes, Ma'am Sheila, our uh, UNDP partners, um, AJ, Miss Lisa, Sir Arlan, Gail, um, our esteemed panelists, Sir Joben Ilagan, um, MMDA Planning Director, Miss Sheila Quinco, and um, our more than 300 guests and audience in Zoom and in Facebook. So welcome to the webinar. Um, our policy research studies at PIDS have been making use of either secondary data from sample surveys and censuses conducted by the Philippine Statistics Authority or compilations from administrative data such as DOH COVID infections database or primary data that we collect from either sample surveys of households and businesses, key informant interviews, and focus group discussions. However, the fourth industrial revolution, which we have referred to in the Institute as FIRE, has triggered the increased use of frontier technologies, including the internet, sensors, and even satellite imagery that have brought about the rise of the big data which we may think as digital fingerprints or data given off as byproducts of digital activities like internet browsing, social media use, or just moving around with our smartphones. Even PIDS is now collecting information about our clients from people who download our knowledge products to those who comment on our social media pages and Twitter handles. So for today's webinar, I am both honored and humbled to present some of the findings of our study titled Addressing Data Gaps with Innovative Data Sources with Dr. Jose Ramon Albert, Ms. Mika Munoz, Dr. Alan Brucal, Ms. Lisa Halili, Mr. AJ Lumba, and Ms. Gail Ann Patani. For our presentation, allow me to start off with an introduction of the study followed by a quick review of related literature on official statistics, digital information, and big data. Then I will briefly talk about the research design of this study before moving on to empirical findings examining TIDS website download data. 
I will then present some findings from text mining and sentiment analysis of web scrape news data on violence against women, as well as some analysis of Twitter data on Philippine tourism before we close with conclusions, recommendations, and ways forward. So as earlier pointed out, the advent of increased use of fire technologies, especially digital technologies, have not only transformed our consuming and producing products and services, but also led to a data revolution with more data being captured, produced, stored, accessed, analyzed, archived, and reanalyzed, and at an exponential pace. I have often pointed out that new data sources, including big data and crowdsourced data, can complement traditional data sources used in official statistics to monitor socioeconomic conditions and various development outcomes. Faced with the growing demand to provide policy advice, PIDs can harness use of innovative data sources to provide decision makers with near real-time information on policy issues. Although we have identified our national development plans and priorities in the Philippine Development Plan, the Ambition 2040, and our commitment to the SDGs, many times we are faced with data gaps on many development issues, even amid the emerging data revolution. PIDS itself is accumulating data on netizens who make use of our knowledge products that we can mine from our website download data, sentiments expressed in social media, as well as the reactions given those by, uh, by people who participate in our public webinars like you. But currently, little data analytics is being performed on such data holdings. So this study was designed to firstly look into examining some of the data we are accumulating at PIDs, particularly the website data to firstly gain insights on what the public demands from us, and also examine the use of various new data sources for addressing selected data gaps on tourism and violence against women, among others. Official statistics have traditionally been sourced from data uh, from data from censuses, sample surveys, uh, admin reporting systems, and other compilation of secondary data following established concepts, definitions, methods, and classification systems. The increased use of digital technologies by Filipinos who several years ago were masters of social media but are now using more Google is providing us big data, which are byproducts of activities from the use of technologies, especially the internet. Big data, however, should be complementing and not replacing traditional data sources. Otherwise, we can make faulty conclusions. Big data analytics should account for significant amounts of noise that can be larger than signals since big data, just like admin data, was not designed for statistical purposes. All data sources have their own strengths and limitations. That said, despite limitations on big data for biases and possible re-identification of anonymized data, there has been growing interest, especially since costs are generally little, if not none, and that the data is timely, in fact, in near real time. Thus, many international organizations have started to look into use of non-traditional data sources. A UN agency created by the former UN Secretary General called UN Global Pulse examined Twitter conversations on the price of rice in Jakarta and found that a resulting index from these tweets provided a near real-time proxy indicator of food inflation. UN Women did a landscape review of big data for addressing gaps on gender data. Recently, ADB, in cooperation with the National Statistics Office of Thailand and World Data Lab, worked on integrating satellite imagery with census and survey data to yield high-quality poverty statistics at small areas in Thailand. So with the potential, use, uh, potential to use big data for official statistics, the UN Statistical Commission established in 2014 an expert group to formulate an ongoing global program on harnessing big data. Under the governance of this expert group, four physical hubs all over the world have been working together to educate, collaborate, and develop research on using big data for addressing gaps in development data. So with this, our presentation aims to address the following policy questions. How can data from these new data sources be transformed into meaningful insights for development 
to affect better development outcomes in such areas such as gender, tourism, and later on, uh, traffic management. So what strategies can be developed to promote the access, analysis, and use and reuse of new data sources and mitigate risks from abuse of big data analytics? So as was pointed out earlier, our first task in this study was to look at PIDS website download data to contribute to new knowledge about PIDS clients and then move on to examining Twitter data and other web scrape data. Several quantitative tools were used on the new data sources, including market basket analysis for website download data, as well as text mining and sentiment analysis for Twitter and web scrape data. Our research design considers the knowledge discovery process, also known as data mining. As mentioned earlier, we will focus on PIDS web download data, Twitter data, and other web scrape data. These data sets underwent data cleaning or pre-processing before transforming the data sets as a task relevant data. Once data analytics is employed, extracted data patterns are then subjected to a communication of data stories to yield insights. So as regards our PIDs download data, Similar Web provides some useful information to profile our PIDs website visitors. Um, in September 22, so this is the time when we uh, drafted this paper, PIDs website traffic registered over 55,100 visits for last month alone, with a 43.22 increase um, compared to August. This is likely on account of our many events, including the Policy Development uh, Research Month. There are more female than male audiences, and many are young. So 44% are aged 18 to 24 years old. A total of um, 64,207 website publication downloads were registered from April 18, 2019 to August 9, 2022. This includes discussion papers, policy notes, research paper series, and articles from Philippine Journal of Development posted at the PIDS website. Comparing the similar web data with actual PIDS web download data we obtained from our research information department and um, ICTSD, about a fifth of these website visitors who shared some of their basic information are aged 19 to 35, female with postgraduate degree or employed full-time, thus validating the earlier profile of visitors in similar web. So examining the download data set, which include 20 broad development themes that PIDs cover, health, governance, and agriculture are the top focus areas of publications downloaded in the past three years. However, looking closely on the annual distribution of downloads per theme, publications tagged under labor and education are the most downloaded content in PIDs website in 2019 at 13.5%. And health used to rank fifth in terms of frequency of downloads at 7%. However, when the COVID-19 pandemic hit in 2020, health took over the first spot, comprising 20% of website publication downloads, followed by governance at 12.6%. The following year, more downloads were attributed to governance at 16.5%, overtaking health at 11.7%. This makes sense as the prolonged pandemic post urgency to formulate health policies to address the consequences of infections. Content level wise, a discussion paper on the early childhood care development first 1000 days initiative in selected UNICEF COICA provinces is the most downloaded publication in the PIDS website at 6%. This is followed by a policy note on issues and concerns in the implementation of the performance-based bonus at DepEd and a discussion paper on expanding health insurance for the elderly in the Philippines, both at 2%. For the market basket analysis, PIDS website download data were then subjected to association rule mining. This involves examining the association between different items. So for items, we refer to PIDS research outputs downloaded to find pre uh, frequent patterns in the PIDS website download transaction database. This association rule mining is also used by many internet platforms such as Amazon or even Shopee to suggest to their clients that customers who brought product A also brought product B. 
Thus, the association rules when applied to our download data generates a set of association rules that identify patterns on what publications or themes of publications tend to be associated or downloaded together when PIDS website visitors download publications. So for the purpose of this presentation, we'll only examine the most prominent themes among PIDS downloads, um, which is health and um, also governance. Uh, the results per theme were made available in our discussion paper. So the a priori algorithm for association rules identifies item sets that occur with a support greater than a predefined value and calculates the confidence of all possible rules based on those item sets. In this case, publication themes. So the support is set at 0 0.01 and confidence at 0.1. So the left-hand side stands for so LHS, sorry, LHS stands for left-hand side, which is the antecedent, and the RHS stands for the right-hand side, the consequent. In the table on this slide, the rule suggests that if a website visitor download a health-themed publication, the support of the rule, the probability that a website visitor will also download a governance content given that he or she downloaded a health tag publication is estimated at 28% is referred to as the confidence of the rule. So for Lyft, a value greater than one suggests that health publication downloads increase the chances that governance, governance publications will also be downloaded in a given transaction. So we also tried to examine association rules not only for themes, but also at the individual publication level but using lower thresholds. The support set at 0 0.001 indicates too few associations that can be accurately concluded. This is likely because there is still very little transaction on PIDS websites, but we can imagine that over time, we will have more website visits that will enable us to gain more insights on associations. So the next slides will then discuss some findings on text mining, web scrape news contents related to violence against women, and tweets on Philippine tourism. With 4.7 billion users, or 58% of the world's total population, spending two hours and 29 minutes a day to keep up to date with current events, connect with family and friends, or search for entertainment, social media is a wealthy source of real-world data for research, marketing, and development of applications. With the advancement of technology, Public conversations on the internet on a specific trending topic, such as tweets, can be extracted using programming tools to analyze data from social media. So Twitter, the seventh favorite social media platform, had a total of 238 million monetizable daily active users around the world, 10.5 million of which are from the Philippines. While social media platforms like Twitter are complex websites, there are available tools to web scrape tweets and other data on Twitter. So what is web scraping? Web scraping is the process of extracting publicly available data from a website and can be programmed through Python, a commonly used programming language with its broad ecosystem of well-maintained libraries. Python is often used in web server development data science and automation. Analyzing Twitter data by scraping tweets using the Twitter API platform can provide insights on global to local topics and events, gain information to better profile target audience, and identify trends and important conversations on Twitter. So Twitter API platform provides broad access to public Twitter data that users have chosen to share with the world. This can be accessed by applying for a Twitter developer account and Twitter evaluates the level of access depending on the intended use of the Twitter data for a particular project. However, it is also important to be familiarized with existing laws as well as the terms and policies of the target website subject for web scraping to avoid data privacy and copyright issues. So currently at 19th place and the only Asian country in the top 20 of the 2022 Gender Gap Index conducted by the World Economic Forum, the Philippines fell two spots from its 2021 rankings, where it ranked 17th out of 156 countries with a score of 0 
as indicator on political empowerment remains low. Our highest recorded rank was at 7th place in 2015. Examining administrative data from reported cases on violence against women by DSWD and TNP, we can observe that the trend is falling. However, uh, Ms. Ana Lorraine Del Rosario, Information Officer of the Interagency Council on Violence Against Women and Their Children, emphasized that low incidence of cases that does not mean that vow decreased in one of her interviews. So at the national level, DSWD Eastern Visayas region reported that the number of domestic violence cases during the second quarter of 2020 climbed to 309 cases compared to only 23 cases reported during the first quarter of the 2020. Gilberto Villamor, Regional Gender and Development Focal Person, cited that cases of domestic violence became more rampant during the second quarter last year um, as it was during this period when restrictions were imposed due to the COVID-19 pandemic. So one should also note that possible biases in social media data with Google trends on the term rape not providing clear evidence of an increase during the pandemic, though there was a slight rise, um, but somehow erratic in other related terms. So based on uh, data reportals, 2022 digital report, 82% of their survey respondents worldwide rely on online channels for news. For this study, we were able to web scrape 561 news articles related to violence against women in the Philippines from five news media outlets such as ABS-CBN, the Philippine Daily Inquirer, Manila Bulletin, the Manila Times, and Rappler for the period 2016 to 2022 during the Duterte administration. So ABS-CBN and Inquirer has an observed increase in bar-related news contents in the past two years. So for this data set, we employed uh, a sentiment analysis, a natural language processing that analyzes people's opinions, sentiments, evaluations, attitudes, and emotions via a computational treatment of the subjectivity in a text. So the Vader method uses a combination of qualitative and quantitative methods to produce and empirically validate a gold standard sentiment lexicon. However, this method mostly applies to the English, English language. So by new site, distribution of news contents lean more on the negative side across uh, all news sites. And by year, vow related news contents during the last two years reflect more negative scores. However, positive and negative scores provide limited insights to address a policy issue. Meanwhile, the resulting word cloud visualized how the issue on violence against women is portrayed and framed among news articles, with the size of the word reflecting its frequency or importance. Children has been closely associated with vow which may be attributed to the Republic Act 9262, a national le uh, legislation addressing violence against women and children. So our study also explored uh, topic modeling, a statistical modeling technique that discovers abstract or the not so obvious topics in clusters of similar words found in news articles. So we utilized latent direct uh, allocation, wherein the web scrape data set of news articles is represented as random mixtures over latent topics, where each topic is characterized by a distribution over words. So this can provide insights on most talked about topics within a certain development issue. So for instance, topic one may cover abuse reports, with a ma um, marginal topic probability of 7.8% with keywords such as abuse, national, must, Philippine, life, report, accused, Quezon, PNP, and local. So moving on to a much lighter topic. So the 35th Annual Condenas Traveler Reader's Choice Awards recognized the world-renowned island of Boracay as the top island in Asia for 2022. Palawan also entered the list of top islands, ranking 8th in Asia, while the Philippines placed 30th out of the 48 top countries in the world and is also awarded among the top 10 friendliest countries. Tourism is one of the most negatively impacted sectors by the COVID-19 pandemic due to large-scale restrictions on mobility in the past two years. 
as borders start to ease and leisure travel is already allowed in most parts of the country and the world, so hashtag revenge travel, it is very timely to examine tourism data to aid policymakers formulate programs and decisions to reinvigorate and harness the competitiveness of the Philippine tourism industry. Official sources of tourism statistics include tourism satellite accounts from the PSA and tourism demand statistics from the Department of Tourism. The June 2022 press release of PSA discusses data such as share of tourism to GDP and total employment for the 2021 period. Meanwhile, DOST, uh, sorry, DOT, sorry, DOT provides more timely data on visitor arrivals by country of residence. However, it would be more useful if more data are made available, such as demographics and purpose of travel, to gain better understanding of our target market. So timeliness is also a factor of consideration since peak season of tourist destinations may differ. So example, Boracay known for its white sand beaches may have more engagement during the second quarter of the year. LGU admin data may also be a data source. However, data is less likely to be subjected to data curation. Despite issues on sampling and representativeness, our study teams create tweets to learn more about the sentiments of Twitter users on Philippine travel. Due to limitations set by um, our Twitter API account in scraping tweets using keywords such as travel and Philippines, our study team was only able to obtain 4,986 tweets for the third quarter of 2022. Again, we use the word cloud to illustrate particular topics, hashtags, or words that are frequently associated with Philippine tourism. Tourist destinations in the Philippines such as Manila, Boracay, and Cebu are among the top 20 words in terms of word count. So it's more fun in the Philippines. A tourism campaign launched 10 years ago under the leadership of um, Former Secretary Ramon Jimenez during the Pinoy administration still remains a memorable tourism tagline as the 62nd most frequent word in the word count. We also tried to proxy Philippine tourism satisfaction by analyzing emotions of tweets using Pluchik and Ekman classifications with both methods generating joy as the most prominent emotion among Twitter users at 66.1% and 85.1% of the tweets, respectively. So topic modeling was again utilized for this data source. Boracay, previously mentioned as a frequent word, is among the keywords on topic one with a marginal topic probability of 33.8% that this abstract topic behind this cluster of words will appear on tweets being analyzed. So for our recommendations and ways forward, so for PIDS data in particular, it will benefit our institute to continue examining PIDS web download data regularly, including the regular conduct of a market basket analysis to improve the training, improve training the algorithm to identify meaningful patterns of association beyond themes, but also in individual publications. This information can help PIDS develop targeted campaigns for um, events in the future. Capacity building programs for data analytics on new data sources can help us harness innovative data sources to provide policy advice to decision makers with near real-time information and uncover limitations of these sources. It is important to recognize that these new data sources complement but cannot replace traditional data sources such as surveys and censuses that undergo regular processes of data curation to maintain data quality in terms of relevance, accuracy, timeliness, accessibility, interpretability, and coherence. Big data provides a fast and cheap stream of information, thus enhancing responsiveness to socioeconomic development problems being addressed in the policy cycle. We should also recognize that there are weeds among the wheat in the use of big data. Risk assessment and risk mitigation on use of big data and other new data sources is necessary since the world of big data and hyperconnectivity no longer guarantees irreversible de-identification that can yield potential harms posed to individuals and to identifiable groups or populations. We should examine identifying what are the threshold at which the identified data is no longer personal. Is it feasible and practical to seek consent in situations of emergency? 
development response when data is de-identified, we should balance needs between protecting data privacy and harnessing use of new data sources for safeguarding civil rights, ensuring fairness, and preventing discrimination. Thank you, and this ends my presentation.